Hello YouTube, my name is Priyanga and thank you for tuning in. Now this video is about integrating a mini DSP to your two channel system. Now I have here um, a subwoofer as well, so it's basically 2.1 system, but you could uh, do this also for your stereo system without subwoofer. Now this video is not about how to do DSP, how to measure your room and how to um, set up your EQ and all. This is basically more holistic view why one would want to do this. Uh, and um, there are some uh, difficulties I'm having to figuring out and I'm going to show you that as well so that somebody has better knowledge uh, who can give their feedback and if somebody um, contemplating of doing something like that they can build upon. Now a little bit of a background where I'm coming from my first experience with DSP I mean good quality DSP was with uh, Arkham AVR 850 uh, that is an uh, AVR receiver audio video receiver which has uh, built-in uh, direct and and I use it for 5.1 system as well as 2.1 stereo listening and it I was blown away by what DSP could do to correct the uh, room acoustic problems so I was really impressed with the unit even though uh, uh, the stereo playing uh, I'm not that um, impressed right so that's the reason why I was I I went from AVR to a um, dedicated stereo uh, setup introduction to my current um, setup I have an Aurend A10 as my stream and DAC and I have name Nate XS2 as my integrated amplifier and my main speakers are Q Acoustic 250i and the real subwoof I'm using the model is T5i now this package um, I mean, especially the main speakers and the uh, amplifier is a very good match. Um, the sound wise, um, the dynamics of the name, uh, it interprets very well. So, so then why do you want to um, introduce an DSP? Um, because I listen to music in my living room. Now that's a common living space shared with other family members so I don't have the liberty of treating uh, do the acoustic treatment to that area what I was able to do is just um, to put a carpet switch on which helped a lot and I have a wooden um, uh, roof um, so that helps a bit but other than that or oh, one side I have a full glass window and the other side is open to the, the kitchen area and behind and and in front of the speakers are um, plastered walls so there are certain things that I could do um, if I get that approval uh, to put some um, acoustic panels behind the wall and put some um, uh, the, the low frequency absor absorption uh, panels but if you if you cannot do all these um, you could try start trying with um, with the DSP now how I integrate the DSP it's there are so many videos about mini DSPs what it can do and it's I think it's very um, good sort of like investment um, for its money uh, the unit itself cost around 205 US dollars and what I wanted to do was to use RU that is a room acoustic wizard it's a free software um, um, you have endless possibilities 
and um, but you should have a little bit of um, um, knowledge to interpret the, the sort of like the graphic it provide and interpret it to to create EQs out of it to uh, to apply it to a um, mini DSP right. I was trying about five to six days with this uh, with this uh, Roo software. My knowledge in Roo to interpret the graphics and 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 to work with it is it's a little bit lacking. So what I did was I upgraded my already purchased Mini DSP to the version. It's a software update. You can upgrade it to the direct live um, version of it. So I purchased that as well. So that means in all in all, uh, my total investment for mini DSP unit was around 450 US dollars. The calibration mic I had already, so I didn't have to buy uh, the mic. I was really impressed that the improvement that it, um, that it bring into my, my listening experience. What it does is basically in general terms, it, it tried to create a flatter, more neutral curve um, to your system, right? Eliminating the, the room modes problems. It does it really well. I mean, direct does it really well. It, it measures the room and it will, it will suggest you a curve where you can, um, you can tweak it a bit. So for example, uh, the flat curve you can, if, if you listening to some uh, all the CDs where you have lack uh, uh, low frequencies, you can boost it a bit. So, and you can um, save four preset, free, uh, preset EQs into mini DSP. So all in all, I'm really pleased with my uh, about $500 investment. And I think, um, I'm not sure if I can um, get this degree of improvement with um, acoustic treatments. So that is my basic um, experience with, with the DSP and uh, it, uh, it proves with the mini DSP as well, the experience that I had with uh, AVR receivers. Now just, just to uh, bring another aspect of it, I think there are more um, companies um, brings DSP to their integrated units more and more. I mean, the room acoustics uh, are a problem. I mean, is a problem um, because you cannot uh, expect that um, buying uh, good speakers and 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 these speakers works well with all the rooms. It won't happen. So, so that's the reason why, unless you, unless you go to the extent to do the uh, the acoustic treatments to your room, or the next best option is introducing a, a DSP unit to your system. So, for example, um, the NAD M33. It's an integrated amplifier, a beautiful unit. I need to uh, borrow it somewhere and test it on my own. But they, it has also built in. Um, built-in uh, direct live and again a NAD T778 which I tested tested in my previous video that's an AVR um, very well uh, integrated direct live into the system and it it has uh, feature wise it ticks all all the boxes that I am looking for it has MQA it has um, uh, it has direct live as I said and uh, it is beautiful. Uh, you don't have to. You don't need to hide it uh, in a rack. Uh, beautiful display. But the thing is, um, so I'm again. I'm 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 um, sort of like convinced that AVR um, is is not that good on stereo reproduction. There is something lacking. It is very good in um, in multi-channel system as a multi-channel system. But purely um, a stereo system, um, I don't think the AVRs is way to go. But I'm really uh, keen on testing M33 NAD, that's an stereo amplifier. So, as I said, so the more and more companies integrating uh, DSPs because 
um, it, it's, it, it, it's a good thing to have in my knowledge. So let's talk about the, uh, the problems I faced with this integration. In, so, the first of all, the volume control. Now, as you see, um, I have connected our end uh, analog output to mini DSP and mini DSP, the front channel is driven by name Nate and the subwoofer is connected to mini DSP uh, uh, separate channel and it is separate. So the advice from the audio files are to uh, have the volume control is the, uh, in the last um, unit of your chain. So that in my case, that's name Nate. Um, but if I do that, as you can see, my subwoof is connected to a different uh, channel in min DSP. So that means if I use name for volume control, so the, the, then it will only have an effect on my front um, main speakers, not for the subwoofers. So that's one part of the problem I had. But if I use um, our end also has a preamp unit here, it, 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 it also has a volume control. But if I use our end for that purpose, then the, the analog current that is putting out will also re uh, get reduced. Analog current is putting out for the mini DSP. Because mini DSP needs that um, sort of like full analog information to do its uh, DSP part. So I was reluctant to uh, use volume control in the mini DSP because it's purely in the digital domain as well as our end as well. But uh, uh, in mini DSP, you, you don't have any visual cues where, you wa where, where the volume control is, right? So, but at the moment I ha I'm using the volume control of mini DSP because I, uh, as I have it, don't have any other choice, right? But well, there's something I'm, I'm struggling, I'm not happy with. And there's one more thing that I could try. Um, um, now, I could connect REL to um, the, the name Nate has subwoofer output. Or I can connect uh, REL has a high level input, you call it, with this uh, speaker connector. You can connect this cable directly to the, the main speaker poles. So what it does is sort of like um, it will the, the volume control, I mean volume um, levels has an effect based on the based on the current it gets. Right? It, I was I was hooked up the, the subwoofer before I introdu introducing mini DSP to my system. Uh, with the high level um, line, high level input, um, and I was really pleased with the result. But then again, there's a problem because um, my main speakers it does uh, frequencies below up to 50 hertz, and there's uh, there's a not very sharp roll off, but it's it's a slow roll off, and. Um, in subwoof, I have a knob to set the crossover frequency, so I can measure it because as uh, rel does not uh, clearly state where the knob should be to exactly 50, kilo, 50 hertz, so I need to measure it. So say supposing I got I I I get the subwoofer to play only the frequencies below the uh, um, below the fifth below 50 hertz and then connect it via um, high level input to my main terminals. Then uh, I need to check there, there's a region um, between 50 to 60 or 50 to 55 Hertz where my main speakers place the same frequencies as well as sub. If, there, if, if there's a negative effect on the uh, overall sound performance. So, until then, I, I will be using um, uh, mini DSP volume control, uh, the crossover set to high pass 50 hertz, connected to rel with 
low power uh, sorry um, low level input and then um, with the 50 years low pass filter to uh, name so it works the result is very good so it works the second situation I have is um, I got some advice from my um, colleagues that it's it's not ideal to do um, digital to analog conversion and analog to digital and digital to analog again because that's what is happening our end uh, has MQA decoding um, which is only um, you can get it out from your yeah, from the analog uh, output so in the in the uh, USB output of the hour render does not uh, output the decoded MQA signal so what that means is that I come back to the second point but the first point is if I use the uh, decoded MQA signal uh, from the hour end uh, output then I have to input into an uh, analog domain in the mini DSP so what happens is the hour end does the initial uh, digital to analog conversion then then uh, DSP received that signal, that's analog signal, and converted it back to the digital signal to do its DSP thing, and then converted it back to analog signal. So there are there's a certain losses. It is not audible. Um, I mean, it can be audible, but I did not hear because I hear only the improvement that DSP brings. So. I did not check go into much details what are the ne negative effect of two times conversion of uh, digital to analog right that's um, that's the second point and um, third point is that um, if I connected uh, the, to, to forego that I could have connected the USB out of the hour render to the USB in um, of the mini DSP so that the signal stays in the digital domain but then again the problem is the first problem the the, the DAC in the mini DSP um, I'm not very convinced uh, the sound quality that it uh, it outputs that's one thing and the and the second thing is as I said um, uh, mini DSP does not do a, a M MQA encoding so that means the MQA signal uh, does not get decoded in the mini DSP if I connect it uh, via the uh, USB output of the render to input of mini DSP so that's the reason why I, I uh, decided to use the analog uh, connections of the render and um, because I don't want to miss the um, MQA, I'm really impressed with the MQA and I'm using Tidal as my um, uh, music streaming service so so I mean I'm, 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 I'm convinced with the, with the quality of MQA so that's uh, all I have for you today so please uh, if you have any suggestions how I can improve it further connection wise uh, the volume control wise please feel free to comment um, below and if you have any question uh, please post them as well as far as um, I can answer those I will I will do uh, with pleasure um, yeah if not see you on next video take care bye